but we do have an interview with Canadian ready. And of course you saw the good spirits that he was in at the conclusion of that matchup. So always a treat to be able to talk to him. Let's bring up the interview here. Congratulations on your victory today. How do you feel? Pretty, pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. Pretty darn good. Excellent. Your hair's not blue yet, by the way. You promised the fans that it would be blue for Invitational, and we are getting very close to the actual date. The appointment is set for the 31st. It's before we go to boot camp. My hair will be blue. So they can clip it in that case then and hold you to account. So excellent. Uh, one thing that we remarked today, first and foremost, your flexibility in particular, and I am glad that it's you doing the interview today. You played by my count six or seven operators through the 12 rounds today, which no disrespect to you, but a lot of times the flexibility tends to come through the rest of the roster with you typically on, you know, your staple operators. It's a conscious choice I'm imagining that you've flexed onto other roles. And when you go round by round, what goes through your mind to be able to make that choice as to what your team needs from you? Um, usually, actually, I have the most freedom in terms of operator picks. I'm typically our sixth pick as, long as, or as well as Geo. Um, usually it's just kind of reading into how I think the other team's going to respond to our previous round or how they think we're going to play, how they want to play the round, basically. So, like, for example, on our defenses, uh, the very first hookah round, um, I knew that they, they they prefer a take where they take all up top and they don't take any lower control. And I ran the vigil. That wasn't as good of a decision, but I noticed they took no lower control at all. So the next round, I went pulse, and I basically waited delay drop. I didn't want to get droned at all. Wait waited late drop, and then we got a free C4 kill from lower. And basically, like, we won the round from free information, an early pick, all that. Um, and then the round after that, I knew, like, there's no way they're going to let me sit lower again with Pulse. So ran a rook up top to take, uh, just take fights, upper control. And they ended up taking lower control, and it, it worked out well. Now, with a map like Coastline, it has traditionally been one of the friendliest maps to attackers. But over the last couple play days, we've actually seen that shift. Now, every single map is trending towards more of a defender-sided affair. And as somebody who has an extraordinary amount of game knowledge and somebody who is actually on record saying that Coastline, quote unquote, sucks to defend, why do you think Coastline is tending to be more defender favored, especially over the last couple play days? Is it the ban from Lion? Is it the way that the operator bans have been falling? What's your take on it? I mean, Lion, Lion was huge on that map because like, it cuts down rotations even further. Um, so that, that, was, that was a big thing. But I, I think mostly just there's more footage of teams on the map. You can kind of read into what type of takes teams do more often. And Coastline's kind of a map where you, you kind of all in on one side. So, like, when you're defending Kitchen, for example, like, you either all in your resources up top for theater side or you all in your resources towards, like, Orange Bar. Um, it's kind of hard to do a 50-50 and, and have a balance with that. So if you can kind of read into how the other team takes um, – you can, you can kind of skew things in your, in your favor, but also it can work against you if the other team rotates or does something different. Right, and you, you pointed it out very well, and we actually talked about it on the broadcast, was a lot of times Hot and Cold would be dispatched on his own to just simply buck above or buck below, and then once you take care of him, there's no other presence on the rest of that floor, which is something you said you read into as well. Last question is going to actually be in relation to your match yesterday and something that's happened a couple times so far this season which is Gio's inability to step in sometimes due to, you know, his, his illness or his internet going out. But you have a pro league caliber coach who can just come in at the last second and be able to play well. What changes as a team do you make when you know you have to sub in Gotcha? Is it just full steam ahead? Or are there small modifications you make with Gotcha coming in to replace Gio on the off chance that Gio can't play that day? Um, I think we tend to focus a lot more on the strategy and, and less with uh, like our fluctuation in terms of uh, like making plays or like when when Gio and I or well we're all in the match Gio and I tend to to kind of try to be unpredictable and rotate to different positions kind of go off our typical strat um, and we're not, we're not too rigid um, whereas we, we play more rigid with gotcha we kind of fit him in directly to whatever the specific role is that he needs to fit and uh we kind of just focus on that but it, it definitely helps having gotcha i mean he is an incredible understanding of the game he works incredibly hard um so it, we're, we're really lucky to have him on board and it's nice to see as you mentioned your flexibility and how you often will be the six pick on your team that you also have a coach you can step in in a pinch it's been a story for all of rainbow six that coaches find a way so with that said anything to your fans sponsors viewers org etc as we end the interview just thank you for supporting us and i uh, hope we can uh, keep this up heading into the heading into the invitation i can't speak <laughs>
it's, it's, uh, it's something yeah. going on right now. I can't speak either. Don't worry. So, <laughs> but congratulations again, and good luck in the next match. Thank you. Thanks. So the only undefeated team in North America in terms of draws as well, because keep in mind reciprocity now, the only other team that doesn't have a loss outside of EG with DZ getting handed their